Okay, so we've seen that electrons have a property called spin, which describes their intrinsic uh, angular momentum, uh, which is important in understanding how electrons fill orbitals and how we determine the anti-symmetry of their wave functions. But it turns out electrons are not the only uh, uh, subatomic pr uh, particles that have intrinsic angular momentum. It turns out the nuclei of atoms also have their own intrinsic angular momentum. So that affects a property called nuclear spin, which is different than the electronic spin. So uh, for example, um, we've seen that electrons can have a spin of plus one half or minus one half. It turns out that the, a, a proton, which is the same thing as the nucleus of a hydrogen one atom, also has spin values of uh, minus one half or plus one half. So the proton, from a spin point of view, behaves exactly like an electron. It can have a spin of minus one half or a spin of plus one half. But it turns out not every nucleus has the same spin properties as a proton or an electron. Nuclei like the nucleus of a, a lithium uh, atom with uh, mass seven, that can have spin values of minus three halves minus one-half, plus one-half, or plus three-halves. So in addition to just being spin up or spin down, it can have uh, spin all the way up or partially up or partially down or all the way down. It's still quantized, just like the uh, spin of an electron or proton is, but it's quantized to four possible values instead of two possible values. So what that means is for the general case, every different nucleus, can be characterized by some value i that we call the, the nuclear spin. And the spin quantum number just like for an electron or a proton, the spin quantum number can be negative a half or plus a half. Lithium, that spin quantum number can have any of these four values. In general, the spin quantum number can be as low as negative i, and it goes up one unit at a time until the largest value it can have is positive i. So for example, a proton, we say proton is a spin one-half nucleus. It has a spin, nuclear spin of one-half, so its possible spin quantum numbers are negative or positive one-half. The spin, nuclear spin of a lithium-7 nucleus is three-halves, which is why it can range from negative three-halves increasing by one all the way up to three halves. In general, if we know the nuclear spin of a particular nucleus, we can predict the, the values that the spin quantum number can have. Notice that um, the degeneracy, the number of possible spins that any nucleus can have is 2i plus 1. So for example, if the spin is 1 half, twice 1 half is 1 plus 1. There's two possible values for the spin of a proton twice three halves plus one, it gives us four possible values for the spin of a seven uh, lithium nucleus. We've seen um, that the spin, nuclear spin for the proton and for a, a seven lithium nucleus are one half and three halves. It turns out the nuclear spin will always be s some multiple of one half, but it doesn't always have to be an odd multiple of one half like these cases. We can have uh, cases like Nitrogen-14, the nitrogen-14 nucleus has a nuclear spin of 1. So we can observe that the spin quantum numbers could be negative 1 or 0 or plus 1, three possible values. In fact, the nuclear spin doesn't even always have to be uh, a positive number. The helium-4 nucleus has a nuclear spin of zero, so the only possible spin quantum numbers it can have are spin zero. So there's only one value it can have for its nuclear spin. So if we were to write out a list of the nuclear spin of all the different nuclei, of all the different isotopes of various different atoms, turns out the exact nuclear spin value is a complicated function of how many protons and neutrons there are in any given nucleus. And being able to predict what the nuclear spin is is possible, but it's a, it's a somewhat complicated problem that's more in the domain of nuclear physics. From a physical chemistry point of view, we view this as just a characteristic property of each nucleus that we could perhaps measure experimentally 
by seeing how many different spins we can assign to the nucleus, or we can look it up in a table from someone else who's evaluated it experimentally.